we've seen AI generate images from other images using GAMS. Then, there were models able to generate questionable images using text. In early 2021, DALI was published, beating all previous attempts to generate images from text input using CLIP, a model that links images with text as a guide. A very similar task called image captioning may sound really simple, but is in fact just as complex. It's the ability of a machine to generate a natural description of an image. Indeed, it's almost as difficult as the machine needs to understand the image and the text it generates, just like in text-to-image synthesis. It's easy to simply tag the objects you see in the image. This can be done using a regular classification model, but it's quite another challenge to understand what's happening in a single two-dimensional picture. Humans can do it quite easily since we can interpolate from our past experience and we can even put ourselves in the place of the person in the picture and quickly get what's going on. This is a whole other challenge for a machine that only sees pixels. Yet, these researchers published an amazing new model that does this extremely well. In order to publish such a great paper about image captioning, the researchers needed to run many, many experiments. Plus, their code is fully available on GitHub, which means it is reproducible. These are two of the strong points of this episode's sponsor, Weights and Biases. If you want to publish papers in big conferences or journals, and do not want to be part of the 75% of the researchers that do not share their code, I'd strongly suggest using Weights and Biases. It changed my life as a researcher and my work in my company. Weights and Biases will automatically track each run, the hyperparameters, the GitHub version, hardware and OS use, the Python version, packages installed, and training script. Everything you need for your code to be reproducible without you even trying. It just needs a line of code to tell what to track once and that's it. Please don't be like most researchers that keep their code a secret, I assume mostly because it is hardly reproducible, and try out weights and biases with the first link below. As the researchers explicitly said, image captioning is a fundamental task in vision language understanding, and I entirely agree. The results are fantastic, but what's even cooler is how it works. So let's dive into the model and its inner working a little. Before doing so, let's quickly review what image captioning is. Image captioning is where an algorithm will predict a textual description of a scene inside an image. Here, it will be done by a machine, and in this case, it will be a machine learning algorithm. This algorithm will only have access to the image as input and will need to output such a textual description of what is happening in the image. In this case, the researchers used CLIP to achieve this task. If you are not familiar with how CLIP works or why it's so amazing, I'd strongly invite you to watch one of the many videos I made covering it. In short, CLIP links images to text by encoding both types of data into one similar representation where they can be compared. This is just like comparing movies with books using a short summary of the piece. Given only such a summary, you can tell what's it about and compare both, but you have no idea whether it's a movie or a book. In this case, the movies are images and the books are text descriptions. Then, Clip creates its own summary to allow simple comparisons between both pieces using distance calculation on bit differences. You can already see how Clip seems perfect for this task, but it requires a bit more work to fit our needs here. Clip will simply be used as a tool to compare text inputs with images inputs. So we still need to generate such a text that could potentially describe the image. Instead of comparing the text to images using Clip's encoding, they will simply encode the image using Clip's network and use the generated encoded information as a way to guide a future text generation process using another model. Such a task can be performed by any language model like GPT-3, which could improve the results, but the researchers opted for its predecessor, GPT-2, a smaller and more intuitive version of the powerful OpenAI model. Model. They are basically conditioning the text generation from GPT-2 using Clips encoding. So Clips model is already trained and they also used a pre-trained version of GPT-2 that they will further train using the Clips encoding as a guide to orient the text generation. It's not that simple, since they still need to adapt the Clips encoding to a representation that GPT-2 can understand, but it isn't that complicated either. It will simply learn to transfer the Clips encoding into multiple vectors with the same dimensions as a typical word embedding. This step of learning how to match Clips outputs to GPT-2's inputs is the step that will be taught during training, as both GPT-2 and Clip are already trained and they are powerful models to do their respective tasks. So we can see this as a third model, called a mapping network, with the sole responsibility of translating one's language into the other, which is still a challenging task. 
If you are curious about the actual architecture of such a mapping network, they tried with both a simple multilayer perceptron, or MLP, and a transformer architecture, confirming that the latter is more powerful to learn a meticulous set of embeddings that will be more appropriate for the task when using powerful pre-trained language models. If you are not familiar with transformers, you should take 5 minutes to watch the video I made covering them, as you will only more often stumble upon this type of network in the near future. The model is very simple and extremely powerful. Just imagine having clip merge with GPT-3 in such a way. We could use such a model to describe movies automatically or create better applications for blind and visually impaired people. That's extremely exciting for real world applications. Of course, this was just an overview of this new model, and you can find more detail about their implementation in the paper linked in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, please take a second to share it with a friend that could find this interesting. It will mean a lot and help this channel grow. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for my next video, the last one of the year, and quite an exciting one.